This is Professor Rudy, and this video is about how to use the Symbolic Toolbox in MATLAB. Uh, what the Symbolic Toolbox is, is a way of using variable expression rather than just number calculations. So one of the first things that you need to do when you want to do things with Symbolic Toolbox is you need to define any symbolic variables that you're going to use and you can do this with the sims command sym's space and then whatever variables you want to define and you can do this I'm only going to define one X but you could do space X Y Z etc and define as many as you need to on one line we're just going to work with one because this will just be a simple example but if I do that statement now I have a symbolic variable X and we can see this in our workspace this is saying it's a one by one symbolic variable. So then we can use this in an expression. So let's say we have some function um, y equals x squared times cosine of x. And x here, I don't have a number stored in that variable. That is just going to remain a symbol. And so if I execute this statement, this is just telling me that now y is this expression in terms of x. So then we can use this to calculate different things of interest. So MATLAB is able to do some calculus functions for us. So if we want to take the derivative of y with respect to x, so like dy dx, and that's just a variable I'm defining, I can get that using the diff function. Diff is for differentiate, and for that, I give it the function, differentiate that function y with respect to x, and then I will get the derivative. And we could check this um, by taking the derivative by hand, and that should be correct. We can also um, use the diff command to take multiple derivatives at once. So if I want the second derivative, I can get that by taking diff of y with respect to x, and as a third argument, I will say two. Take two derivatives with respect to x. And again, we could check that um, by hand calculations, but that should be correct. So we can do derivatives using diff. We can also do integrals using int. And if you just do int of y with respect to x, we will get the indefinite integral of that function. So it will integrate and give us that result um, in terms of x. But MATLAB can also do definite integrals. So if we had limits of integration, we can also put those in here. So we can integrate that function y with respect to x from a lower limit of 1 to an upper limit or sorry lower limit of 0 to an upper limit of 1 and then we should get a numerical expression now what comes out here is this is it is a number and it's just not simplifying the cosine and sine terms in their decimal values because you can see that answer is still a symbolic expression and one thing that we can do is, so I'm going to hit the up arrow key. That will bring up the last command I entered. And then I'm going to do this. For that result that I got out there, I don't want it to be symbolic. I want to convert that to a number. And the way MATLAB does normal decimal numbers, they're called double. That's a double precision floating point number. Um, but if you don't care about that computer science stuff, just accept that double will make things in decimal form. And so if we do that, then we can get the actual decimal value of that definite integral. Another thing that we can do is we can use these symbolic expressions, and then we can actually give x a value and calculate at that value. So for example, if we wanted to evaluate y at x equals 2, we do that with the subs command. And that's subs for substitute, and we do subs of substitute into the function y for the variable x and then the last piece will be where you want to evaluate x so if I put 2 here that's evaluating at x equals 2 and if we evaluate that then again we can get a number from our symbolic expression 
One last thing that we can do with these symbolic expressions is we can plot them using that variable expression. We don't need to give it a bunch of different values for x to get a plot. We can actually have MATLAB do that for us using the ezplot command. So ezplot, we will give it the function, so that is the y. And then the second argument we need to give it, it's actually, it has to be a vector, so I need square brackets here. And it's just a vector that has two components. The first component being a lower limit, so let's say 0, and an upper limit, for example, 1. And it's going to plot over these range of values. Close my square brackets to finish that vector. Close my parentheses, and if I hit enter, I should get a plot. And it also is going to label the x-axis for you, and then it will show you the function that it plotted up here in the title. Um, and that's something that you can use to generate figures from symbolic expressions. Um, and those are just some of the basic uses of the symbolic toolbox.